Hello again. This video I thought I'd do a bit of a review uh, walkthrough of one of my own guitars, namely this one. It's a Fender HM Strat. Not a Stratocaster, a Strat. Uh, this guitar um, was made in 1989. I was quite lucky and I got it, uh, bought it directly from Fender. Um, I went to a Fender demonstration night at a local music store and uh, bought this from the, the demonstrator pretty much straight after the after the gig. Uh, tell you a little bit about it. It's made in Japan, not America, as the guitar might have you believe. There's nothing on here that actually says made in Japan. Uh, you know, normally there'd be something on the headstock or whatever. The only country reference explicitly is here on the, the heel plate. And I'll do a few close-up shots of the guitar later, but here on the heel plate it says Fender USA. But right above it, on the serial number here, it begins with E. And if you know your Fender serial numbers, you know that E means that the guitar was made in one of the Japanese factories. And the story that I've heard is that in the, sort of in the late 80s, you know, guys like Ibanez and Charvel and a few others were really dominating the super strat market. And Fender's response to that uh, was, was this, predominantly aimed at you know, rock and metal players, hence the HM designation. And came out of the Japanese factory, but when the guys in the USA saw it, they were got a little bit you know, maybe jealous or a bit of national pride kicked in, saw how well made and what a good guitar it was that was coming out of Japan. So they do a little bit of final assembly and set up in the American factory and they brand it as Fender USA. And this, uh, there's nothing on here that actually says made in Japan other than, than that serial number. This one was made in 1989, as the serial number tells you. And at the time there were four colours in the range, there was black, white, teal, which is like a sort of turquoise blue colour, and this colour which is called raspberry with a Z. Uh, later on the, the range of colours expanded a little bit, but back in the day there was only four colours. And a bit of trivia, the underline of the Strat on a HM Strat should match the body colour, so if one of these was teal, you'd see a teal stripe there. In terms of construction, let's talk about how the guitar is made. It's a basswood body. Uh, this is pretty common for uh, for like rock guitars of, of this type. Um, fitted with humbucker and two single coils. The body itself is slightly elongated compared to a normal Strat uh, because it's got the 24 fret neck. So just to get the you know, the perspective and, and, and that right slightly longer body. It's still got the tummy cut here and it's still got the cut away on the, the top for the on the upper bow for the for your forearm. But the edges a little bit uh, a little bit sharper than they would be on a on a strat. It's not quite as contoured. So let's talk a little bit about the electrics and what we've got here. Got a humbucker and two single coils. The humbucker is a uh, Damasio. Now the later versions of the HM Strat, the pickup's a little bit more distinctive in that all 12 of the pull pieces are like a little hex screw. This is a an earlier one where it looks a bit more traditional. You've got six of the pull pieces here on normal screws, like a, a flathead screw type adjustment, and the other ones are just flat slugs flush with the, the pickup cover. Um, it is a Damasio, but the, the later ones uh, were like an evolution of, of this version of the pickup. And it says two single coils. In terms of the controls, the layout looks similar to a, a normal Strat in that you've got a five way selector and you've got three knobs. The knobs, though, behave slightly differently to a, a, a normal Strat. This knob here, volume control, as you'd expect, the one nearest the pickups. The tone controls though, this back tone control is the tone control for the humbucker and the tone control in the middle covers the neck and the middle single coil. When you move them, there's a slight notch halfway. These are what's called the TBX controls. From zero to halfway, they behave like a normal tone control. And from that notch position up to full, they behave more like a boost. Now they're not active pickups, it's not it's not like an EMG type of setup. Um, 
But if you if you have a have a Google or look on Wikipedia or something, it'll explain a bit more about how the TBX uh, tone controls are wired. They're a little bit different to a normal tone control. So you kind of got a, a a normal tone control from one up to five, and then from five to ten, it's like a, a boost sort of control. Switching, we've got the back position here is the humbucker on its own. Now that humbucker is splittable, so we've got a coil split micro switch here. So flick that up, it goes into single coil mode or down gives us the humbucker. Position two is the middle single coil and the humbucker. Middle position is the middle pickup on its own. Next position along gives us the neck and the middle single coil together. Because of the way that they're wound, that's effectively giving you hum cancelling as well, because one of those is wound out of phase. And then Lastly, in that position, nearest the deck, it's the neck humbucker. Sorry, the neck single coil on its own. So that's the controls. The other main feature on the body, obviously, is the, uh, the tremolo. This is a Carla or Kela Spider. It's modelled very closely on the Floyd Rose model. Um, you know, sort of where you chop the ball ends off the string, clamp them in. Got micro tuners uh, here. A couple of things actually evolved from the, the Floyd is it's got a tiny little grub screw just down the edge here. So you can adjust the, the tension to screw in arm, but by adjusting that, that grub screw you can uh, alter how firm or how loose the tremolo arm, in, arm is, which is quite a nice feature. And the two knife edge type pivots, so you get really, some really extreme like whammy bar type of uh, operation out of it. Looking around the back, not too much to see control cover for the uh, all the electrics here and the plate covering the, the tremolo cavity. The neck joint as you can see it's kind of offset so the heels partly carved away and the screws are offset so you've got better access up to the up to the top of the neck. Nice satin finish on the neck with a skunk stripe down the back. So looking at the neck it's a one piece maple neck hence the skunk stripe on the back, uh, though the HM strap did come with an option of a, a rosewood fingerboard. Uh, the neck itself is a little bit shallower than a normal uh, strap neck, it feels a bit wider and it's certainly a lot flatter in radius which reflects the sort of styles it's, uh, the guitar is aimed for, you know, for doing bending and tapping where a wide flat fingerboard is, is more useful. Quite quite large fret, not particularly high profile but quite quite broad and it's really a nice neck to play. Um, down the end here is the locking nut for the trem which is fixed from the top so there's no screws going through the back of the neck which is a, can be a weak point if you mount the, the locking nut from the back. This is mounted from the front which is good. Some earlier uh, strats from, from Fender that had the locking trem they put the like a normal plastic or bone nut or whatever here and then the locking nut was actually behind that. Looking back it's a bit of a poor piece of design because there's still a point where you're going to have friction and the guitar can go out of tune. So here there's no points of friction between the nut and the saddles which is good. Headstock as you can see, the Strat logo very large, little Fender logo here um, and round the back We've got some Goto tuners, just normal tuners finished in black, which work very well. The only modifications I've done to this above stock is something I do with all my guitars, is that I've taken the strap buttons off and replaced them with Jim Dunlop dual design strap locks. In terms of condition, it's done pretty well. It's had a quite a life traveling around doing music lessons and stuff but it's not been particularly heavily gigged um, so it's in so it's pretty good pretty good state of repair a little bit of standing on the fingerboard uh, which you might be able to see on the on the video but uh, to be honest that's something that would that would clean up uh, one or two slight dings down here by the uh, by the neck pick of whether the one bars been pushed down a little bit too hard um, on the back surprisingly clean one kind of scratch there but generally no real no real damage on the back which is unusual you know because you on a lot of guitars you see the backs there's a you know a whole lot of belt buckle damage and so on but uh, generally pretty good uh, pretty good condition 
One thing I'll mention about the uh, the neck joint, which I missed before, is if you look at the uh, the neck plate here, there's a little uh, hole. In there, there's a grub screw, which you can adjust with an Allen key. So this helps you to get the setup on the guitar right now. If you set up your own guitars in the past, you might have had to do things like go into the neck joint here and putting a little shame, a piece of paper or a business card or something in to get the, the angle of the neck right. The idea with this, this little screw is that when you, you can slacken off the, the neck screw slightly, tighten that or loosen that to adjust the pitch of the neck and then, and then tighten the screws up. Never really had to use it in anger, it was always been pretty well set up uh, pretty much from the get-go, but it's a, it's a nice little feature to have. In terms of sound, it's a lot more versatile than you might expect. It's billed as an HM, a heavy metal guitar. Um, but I've used it in a lot of situations that I wouldn't consider to be, be rock or, or heavy metal. So what I'm going to do now is let you hear how it sounds uh, with the different uh, pickup combinations, clean and dirty, and I'll also let you have a look at some close-up pictures of it. my 1989 Fender HM Strat. Uh, this guitar I've had say, from, from new, uh, so I bought it from a Fender, Fender demonstrator, you know, so it came out of the factory, did a bit of a, a demonstration tour and then it came to me. Uh, took it all the way through uh, music college when I was at MI, I got this, actually got this guitar pretty much for my studies at MI. Uh, and to be honest, uh, it's a bit with a bit of a heavy heart. I am actually thinking about selling it now. It's not getting used as much as it should, and I know there's a lot of guys out there. Although this wasn't a massive commercial success when the guitar first came out, there's a bit of a uh, community out there of people who really like and really love the Fender HM Strat, and I'm wondering if maybe it's time to to move this guitar on and let somebody else enjoy it. So, if you like this, if you're interested. Um, get in touch, you know, email, private message or whatever, um, and if it's still, still for sale, it might be a deal to be done. Let me know if you're interested. Okay, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video sometime soon. Bye for now.